Hey guys, what's up? It's Dave Duford here at Final Expense Agent Mentor. I want to thank you so much for joining me again on my no BS Final Expense sales training training thing event. <laughs> Glad you decided to make it today. Uh, hope you guys are having a fantastic Monday. It's uh, raining like cats and dogs here over in East Tennessee. And I'm getting my coffee on here as you can tell, as I always do. I hope you guys are having a great day and uh, looking forward to a profitable week. And in today's training, what I'm going to be talking about, as described earlier on, are the top 10 reasons to sell final expense insurance. And so the reason I created this training is that I really wanted to catalog the, all the benefits that there are with selling this particular type of product so that agents who are just recently licensed or looking to get licensed in the life insurance business um, can get an accurate profile at the advantages that final expense sales provides relative to other lines of insurance. So what I'm going to try to do here today is describe final expense in relation to other lines as well. So what you're going to kind of hear are some uh, comparisons made and um, so that you can better get an idea of where the primary advantages of final expense lie. Now, I will say this up front, if, if you've never seen any of my material, I'm the kind of person that lays it out, not just the good, but also the bad too. And there is no line of insurance or any line of business where there is no bad. Uh, there's always drawbacks, there's always challenges, no matter what it is that you sell. And final expense is no different. Um, I will somewhat hit on that as well. In fact, I may actually come out with a video that tells you the 10 reasons not to sell final expense insurance because that will be just as useful as telling you the good reasons why final expense is a good place to not only start in the insurance business but to yield a lifelong career as well. Daniel, thanks for joining today. Hope you're doing fine. So let's get started on our today's training. So the number, and here's the thing, all of these are not in any necessary type of order. Um, I've just listed out what I figured would be good reasons uh, to sell life insurance in the final expense market. So don't mistake in this as any one preferential over the other. They're just a collection of the, I think, superior advantages. Okay, so number one would be the simple sales process for final expense. So when I say simple sales process, if we look at sales in general, you've got products in which require what we call a pipeline. Uh, or require a sales funnel, meaning at the point of contact, it may take days, months, multiple contacts to actually close the sale. Your more elaborate, more technical um, sales, uh, such as yacht sales, maybe um, uh, product sales, um, pharmaceutical sales, maybe not pharma sales, but more medical device sales, all of these things require 10 usually require a longer process to get to know and fact find the prospect and see what they want, what they're looking for, and eventually offer a solution. You may be up uh, in front of some sort of deadlines. It, you, they may be interested in buying from you or potentially interested, but their budget doesn't renew till the end of the year. So what happens with those types of businesses is that while the payoff is great, sometimes it can take quite a while to actually witness and realize the sales event. And again, nothing wrong with that. It's just like any sales. You've got to build a strong pipeline of different prospects and different scenarios so that you always have a predictable flow of business coming in. It's your job in that particular environment to prospect just as heavily and under any circumstance so that you can always maximize the take-home pay that you can because a lot of those deals won't pan out and you can't just depend on one deal. Another way to call that is elephant hunting. Uh, where you're going for the big sales, uh, they take a long time, they take a lot of um, uh, vetting, they take a lot of uh, work to make happen, and it doesn't usually happen in one fell swoop. Final expense is not like that. Final expense is the exact opposite. <clears throat> it is, there is really no long-term pipeline. You literally walk in the door, and the prospect either has the basic need, which they can express, and you have the product, hopefully, that can match their budget and desires. And they're either going to buy it or not. It's really that simple. There's no professional top producing final expense agents that really seriously have a kind of pipeline or a pending business where they've got this catalog or collection of people they talk to 
that they're going to call back in the next month, two months, and that kind of thing. I'm not saying that they don't do that and that they don't have that to some extent, but it's not the primary course of their business. They're not making a third or a half percent or half uh, an income 50% more than the guys that don't do that. It's a marginal increase and it makes sense for them. But the core of what a final expense agent does is he goes out and he either sells it or he doesn't. So if you're geared towards a sales process where there's not a lot of technicality, which we'll talk about a little bit later, where you just meet the need of the prospect and make the sale or not, this particular line of business is perfect for you. Um, it's simple, as we'll talk about in a minute. It doesn't take a long time to actually sell the product. And it's really geared for the people who are hunters. Uh, Tom, who regularly uh, comments on some of my articles, he may listen on my video sometimes, he made, the, he made the analogy of a hunter versus a farmer. This is a business that's good for the hunter. The guy that just wants to go out there, get her done, and leave. Uh, doesn't want to create a relationship, doesn't necessarily mind it, but wants to get in there and make the sale or not, and move on quickly to the next one if he doesn't make it. So if you're geared like that, final expense is perfect for you. I've been in relationship sales. I used to be a personal trainer. I used to own a personal training gym. You're in relationships with your clients for a long time. Get nothing wrong with that, but in final expense, it's you're going to make the sale and probably never speak to these people again. And if you're okay with that kind of sales process, uh, then this is perfect. So that's number one, simple sales process. Number two is that final expense along with that is an extreme numbers game. One of the things I like about final expense is that there's really not a technicality or there's not a lot of technically advanced stuff you've got to learn how to do. If you like to simply sell and you want to meet a basic need a lot of people have in a large mass market, final expense is perfect for you. You don't need to master and, and get, get all these advanced credentials like many in the life insurance have to get in order to do advanced planning. You just have to be willing to take leads or do prospecting of some sort like the seminar marketing that I teach and go do that in large numbers. And that's why it's a numbers game because eventually the blind squirrel finds a nut eventually if he gets out there and looks hard enough. And the same thing for you. If you go out there and knock on enough doors, you don't have to be the best salesperson in the world. You're going to stumble across a person that just lost a loved one within the last year or two. And when you show up, you're the answer to their prayers. Literally, I've had people say that God sent me to them to sell them this, and they really believe that. And that's what this business is about, is getting out there to do the numbers and make this successful. And as we'll talk about in a little bit, related to the numbers, this is scalability, which is really exciting as well. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Let me take a quick coffee break here. Now, number three, and this is a big one for me, uh, especially if you're a younger guy, I'm 32. If you're even younger than that, or if you're an older dude, like a lot of my guys in their 50s and 60s, um, even older that work with me, uh, this is really important. I think final expense has a level of certainty that a lot of other insurance lines and a lot of in, un, sales industries don't have. And that is we have demographics on our side. Uh, number one, uh, most people, uh, in fact, the large majority of people are retiring or hitting that 65-year-old uh, number. As many of us have heard, the number I think now is 11,000 a day or turning 65 and will continue to do so for the next 20 years. On top of that, we're not just selling 65-year-olds. That's not the implication. It's just that the majority of Americans are moving into an older age type of scenario. And with that comes these needs like dealing with death and dealing with the financial impact so that another loved one doesn't have to deal with it. So there's a large market of people who are now entering this life phase where they would consider something like this, whereas in many times they would never have prior to entering this phase of life. Namely because as they get into their late 50s and 60s, what happens is, is that they have spouses die, they have loved ones go away, um, they realize that they're terminal and they're going to die. And so as much of life insurance is, it is an event purchase. And so with more people entering this time, age, this age in their life where these events of death occur, it becomes very apparent to many more now than really ever that final expense is something that many people need because frankly, lots of people get to retirement age without any money. 
most people uh, are, are economically stressed and a life insurance policy for final expenses solves that problem. And again, this is the trend we're going to see for decades. So if you're looking for a career with longevity, final expense is going to offer it to you because so many people are now in this phase of life and will continue to age into this phase of life for a very long time. So uh, that's great. Whereas a lot of insurance, for example, uh, mortgage protection, it's gotten better over the past couple of years. But 10 years ago, when the mortgage crisis happens, the mortgage protection business just basically just took a giant downward turn along with the mortgage business in general. Uh, Medicare Advantage has become more difficult to uh, solicit business, to keep business. It's become more consolidated. A lot of people are very unhappy. And of course, you can't help but to mention the health insurance business where the government has gotten involved and has totally destroyed the agent trying to uh, squeak out a living. I know many agents, many agents that were making six figures in renewal income in the health insurance business that had it all wiped away because of, of Obamacare and the Affordable Health Care Act and how that how these companies basically ratcheted off the commission so these agents wouldn't get paid on anymore. It's a bunch of crap. Great thing about final expense related to demography and how things are changing there is that this is my personal opinion politically that Social Security will not be changed for this generation at least. Maybe for me in my 30s or the guys and gals in their 20s, but I don't see anybody on any side of the aisle making any substantive changes economically to Social Security and even disability payments for those in their 40s, 50s, and, and 60s and beyond. Uh, so it's a safe bet that these people will continue to get a check unabated, and uh, because they get those checks, we'll be able to take money for premiums. So uh, that's good for us that wants to take advantage of that and turn this into a long-term career. That's the important thing. I'm going to take a question here from Ken. Hey, Ken, how you doing today? Ken asks, hey, Dave, to my knowledge, Transamerica requires fax or mail for applications. Do you use a standalone fax machine or computer-based one? If, if, if computer, how do you like uh, and any suggestions on a good one? Okay, so I'll tell you what to do right now. Um, in fact, let me pull it up here. Give me one second. I'm going to pull over my... Um, desktop so you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, hold on one second. Okay. So if you look at this page here, what you want to do is go to gotfreefax.com. Okay. And I can't quite zoom up to it, but if you go to gotfreefax.com, it's basically a per thousand or per page purchase. And if you buy $50 worth of faxing, you, you basically pay five cents a page. Um, this has been what I've used for the past four years for all my application faxing, um, and it's worked great. The quality of the paper faxing is good. It's cheaper than a lot of the other options I've seen based on the volume of faxing I do, and um, it's a very easy interface to get used to. And again, it's I'll show it to you again. It's gotfreefax.com. Uh, check it out. Uh, register an account. It's very simple to use. And you also want to make sure you do take advantage of carriers that do allow for uh, secure uploads from their website. Transamerica has one. If you log into agentnetinfo.com and then you go to the email document section on the left side of the screen, you'll see a way that you can upload an application and then just upload it that way. That's what I do with Transamerica because otherwise you're paying, you know, an arm and a leg with all the paperwork you got to fax in. So uh, hopefully that helped, Ken. If you guys got any questions like that, you're always welcome to ask me while I'm uh, uh, going away here. So, okay. So, point number four here is that, as I mentioned kind of briefly earlier, final expense is not a technical sale. And what I mean by that is that when I came into this business six years ago, back in 2011, I had a personal training gym. I was really feeling uh, the burn financially. Uh, I didn't have time to spare because my business was going under and I had sat around for long enough that um, I needed to act fast and get out there and make something. So I looked at Medicare supplements and then I looked at final expense. And understand this is the perspective of somebody from the outside in. I hadn't sold any insurance. I was looking for a line to go with. My perspective was that final expense was much less difficult to learn. You're just selling a policy and they're all the same. They're either going to be full coverage, partial coverage, like a graded plan or a two-year waiting period plan. That's basically all of them. And the underwriting is very similar. 
And really what it's about is just getting out there and working hard. I knew I could do that coming from an entrepreneurial background. I was up in the morning at 4.35 every day. I'd work until 7 or 8 in the gym. You know, so it was hard work wasn't something that I wasn't used to. I'd put the hours in. I wasn't afraid of that. And it was cool because you just had to go out there and as long as you saw enough people, you're going to eventually sell some stuff. And I thought, I could do that. That doesn't sound too uh, off the deep end. So um, looking from the outside in, that was a huge draw for me. And what I found out is that that's all the truth. I mean, certainly you've got to refine your sales skills. That's why I do these trainings. Uh, you've got to make sure you're dialed in with the right lead program. You've got the right carriers. That's really where the elements are that really further refine and improve your skills. But you can get out there with leads immediately and start selling people. That's what's great about it and make money today. Uh, whereas the perspective I had at the time of Medicare is I had to learn all the stuff about Medicare. Um, I may offer the wrong plans. I may mess up uh, seniors' insurance on prescriptions or health insurance. It's not nearly as complicated now that I know a little bit about it, but that's because I've been in insurance for a while, whereas at the, at the time, you know, um, I, I, I had to get to work, and I had to get work quickly. So for me, final expense was great because it's all about getting out there and just selling. It's not technical. It's not like annuities where you've got to get compliance. You've got to, you're dealing with large sums of money. Um, you've got to do illustrations and all that stuff. You don't have to worry about all that stuff. You just take a policy and take, a, take an application and a carry and go do something. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy. Well, wait a minute, I didn't say that. It's simple. It's not easy, but it is simple. And that's why I liked it. You're, you're welcome, Ken. Uh, number five, along with the fact that final expense is non-technical and you can quickly get out there and sell, is that it is fast and high pay commission. Now, final expense, one of the biggest drawbacks of final expense is that final expense is not a renewal-driven product. I had an agent of mine call me on that and ask me, well, what kind of renewals you make? And, and the thing is, is that they're not really that good. I mean, 5 to 10% is the norm across the industry. It depends on the carriers, depends on which year. They pay out 5 to 10% between years 2 and 10. You've got to really sell a ton of business for multiple years to create a good flow of renewals. Now, there are companies, and, and you can make money from renewals, but you've got to really do this hard and heavy. I'm talking 200000 ish you paid for 5 to 10 years to really notice a difference in your renewals. And that's the biggest downside to final expense, is you've got to get up every morning and go find it and kill it. Again, it's a hunter job. It's not a farmer job like Medicare or property and casualty where it's a renewal-driven business. You may not make as much on the front end, but if you stay with it over time, you're making a lot of money before you get out of bed, and that's certainly cool too. So final expense really, really is good for the guy who wants to go out there, hunt, and find the business and get paid well to do it. That's the thing. Uh, you're going to get paid. It depends, of course, what you sell, but usually a lot better than a lot of the renewal-driven products that are out there. And so if you need money fast and you've got some sales skills and you want to go see people and you're not afraid of knocking doors to do it with leads in hand, uh, final expense is what's going to do it for you. Uh, but you got to understand, you got to get up every morning to do it. That's kind of the critical thing with this business. Um, number six point is that final expense in the insurance business is suited really best and more optimally towards the broker. So if you're a final expense, if you're in this business and in insurance in any capacity, you want to be a broker in the final expense business. Really what sells in this business is you. You know, I can say a lot about the carriers that we use, how they're ranked, how long they've been in business. I can do all sorts of stuff like that, show them my license. But at the end of the day, what really matters is do they trust you? Now, they're going to buy from you as long as you meet on top of them being sold on you. The other biggest factor is making sure that you can actually give them optimal coverage. And nobody, and I mean nobody, it doesn't matter if you're with a captive carrier, like the company named after American President, or you're with one of the brokerages out there and you just choose to do one carrier, if you're pigeonholed, you're pigeonholed. Your clients aren't going to get the best deal. And just as important, you're not going to make the most money. And you're not going to have as good quality of business that sticks on the books either. So I say all this because if you're new, you want to work with an agency that brokers multiple carriers. Why? Because every carrier looks at underwriting differently. Some are good with di diabetes. Others are better with cancer. And you want to preferentially put your clients with the optimal carrier. This allows you, first of all, to make the most money 
because you're giving the best product and usually the best products pay the most commissions. And then number two, you prevent people like myself coming in to try to replace you. Um, if I come in three to six months later after you write a deal, and let's say you work with a company named after American president, and you, we're dealing with people flat out or just poor. You know, they're fixed income seniors. And what's very motivating to them is freeing up money that they otherwise would not have, sending it to an insurance company. And as long as I can do better and actually show them and really truly get them something better, they're going to switch you know, eight out of 10 times, nine out of 10 times. And so you don't want to expose yourself to that kind of replacement risk because it affects your quality of business and you just won't keep a lot of that business on the books because of your competition. So what you want to do as a new agent, look for an agency that offers a lot of different brokerages. A boutique agency is best in my opinion, not the mega agencies. Work with a smaller agency that has a track record of uh, developing and training agents into productive uh, salespeople in the final expense business that has access to multiple carriers. That's critical and that's how you're going to do the best in this business. Uh, number seven, it's kind of funny, uh, it's a casual dress code type of business. You don't have to wear a suit and tie at all in this business. Uh, I had a buddy ride along with me up in uh, East Tennessee. Uh, he had a suit jacket on, uh, which I was shocked. Actually, I'm not. He's in his 70s, so he does that kind of stuff. He's old-fashioned. But uh, he was carrying a piece on him, too, so <laughs> a gun when I say a piece. So I'm sure that was the reason he was wearing it. But you don't have to do any of that. Um, you know, what I wear in the field, I wear jeans. I wear a button-down shirt or something like this, like a golf shirt. And that's it. I've even known people that wear shorts and do very well. Um, the people we deal with are not white-collar. They're not going to be judgy when it comes to your clothes and what you're wearing. You just need to look halfway decent. Um, certainly comb your hair, um, don't wear wrinkly old pants and shirts and stuff like that, of course, but, you know, make sure, you know, you don't have to put on a, a full suit and tie. They'll think you're the popo or the fuzz or somebody coming after them. I mean, they really will. You know, they'll be skeptical. It's funny what you hear out from talking to these people. I've had people say that. Whereas if you just look normal, you put on a nice pair of jeans or khakis, a button down or a pole, man, that's enough. So it's cool, you know, you're not, you don't have to dress up all the time. You just go out there and wear normal clothes, look halfway decent, and that's, you don't have to worry about any sort of formal attire or anything like that. Uh, number eight, of course, what's great about this business um, is that you're not stuck at a desk. This is real, this was really important to me. Uh, when I graduated college, I hated the idea of potentially being stuck in a uh, cubicle somewhere. It was just not in my nature. And I love the idea of having some level of freedom, even if that means just going from house to house, um, being out on the road, like to drive. And what's great about this is that you're out there seeing people in their own uh, environments. As long as you're comfortable stepping into people's houses and you'll see some crazy stuff, uh, it keeps things interesting. I mean, when you hang around final expense agents long enough, they've all got crazy war stories about uh, crazy stuff that's hilarious that, you know, is stranger than fiction, and you get a lot of that when you're out in the field dealing with people. And so, like, if, if you just hate the idea of being chained to a desk, final expense is awesome for that. Um, you're, you're not going to see people in your office. You're going to go out and see them. It's a very activity-based business, and you just you have the freedom to go work when you want and how you want to. You can work first thing in the morning, you can start at 11 or 12, like I did for the, the last week, work till 7 or 8 at night, whatever, Monday through Friday. You can work weekends if you want. It's totally up to you. You've got a lot of freedom. That's definitely a cool thing about final expense. Number nine is, um, and this is a cool, hey, uh, Janelle, how you doing today? Another cool thing about final expense is that you've got uh, the ability to get instant approval. And this is really important, and especially those agents out there who have um, experience in the underwritten business, meaning they wrote traditional term or whole life or universal life products on prospects. One of the most difficult things to become accustomed to is the underwriting time it takes to actually get a policy approved. On top of the fact that the rate that you send it in may be priced even higher, and so that you gotta go back and sell a higher rate. That's frustrating. Uh, to not be paid for weeks or months even uh, is a very frustrating ordeal. Now, the non-med side of the business has helped uh, ameliorate that, has helped reduce that turnaround time. But still, um, people need to get paid and paid quickly. 
and final expense is where it's at with that because with many of our carriers you call the company on the phone they pull medical records and prescription history on the spot and give you a thumbs up or thumb down that's awesome one of my family or yeah family benefit is my favorite carrier that actually does that that if you go out there and write a deal up they'll give you a thumbs up or thumbs down the majority of the time so you can leave with confidence knowing not only your deal sold but you also are going to get paid upon submission and then upon issue they pay half and half like that so you don't have a an underwriting uh, timetable it just it's done or not and uh, that's great for people again that want to get paid quickly and it just helps a ton because in this business one of the most important factors is staying in a high cash flow type of um, situation um, the, le the more time between cash flowing the harder it is to stay afloat and uh, this helps that out a lot now before I get to my last point here uh, oh it's Linnell I'm sorry Linnell Linnell has a question he says hey guys download cam scan on your mobile phone you can email fax after right to the company yeah that's cool too I think I've seen that before um, I think what you do Linnell is you just like take a picture of it right with your phone and then you got a whole PDF and then you can just scan it back in or forth I think that's how it works correct um, pretty sure it is um, and I think it's free or it's like five or ten bucks it's really cheap there's a lot of cool stuff like that I was doing a conference call earlier I'm kind of a technological Luddite I'm not you know I just like got a smartphone not too long ago I've always had flip phones all I do is paper apps you know I fax them in I don't have a fax machine but I scan them in um, but uh, yeah I'm I don't do all that stuff but you can certainly do it and it will cut down on the time tremendously if you know what you're doing if you're like me that's kind of set in his ways um, you know a scan thing is just as good and yeah there's gonna be more time doing the paperwork and stuff but um, whatever works whatever floats the boat man eh, that's what you want just like Linnell saying is totally fine all right so let's talk about uh, last point here um, one of the big reasons to sell final expense is how scalable final expense is this is what's really exciting it took me a long time to realize this uh, I had to look at other top producing agents uh, to help me uh, change my belief patterns or really just realize what I didn't see initially and it's this the guys and I tell agents this all the time the guys that are buying 20 leads a week and doing 10 appointments off of them or I should put it this way the guys that are doing 10 appointments a week as far as what they do in the appointments how they sell what carriers they do it's the same exact process as what the guys that do 40 appointments a week there's no difference at all the only difference is the guys that are doing 40 appointments a week are working four times as hard okay but the point is is that to go from 10 to 40 is not some total reinvention of the sales system or total reinvention of the lead generation system you don't have to go and completely contort yourself now there's things you have to change um, and things to get adjusted to and you certainly have to be comfortable with the idea of going from 20 leads to even 60 70 80 leads to get that many appointments that's you know that's pretty tough for a lot of guys but the point is you can do that if that's what your desire is if you want to scale up and do a heavy amount of appointments and heavy amount of sales activity all you've got to do is figure out how you're going to fit it into your schedule and maybe outsource the appointment setting work in order to make that happen that's what I do in my business as a personal producer and I know other agents that do the same thing and so that's what's cool about final expense is that once you get started even if it's on a part-time basis again if you're looking into this business can I do this part-time do I have to go full-time you can easily do this part-time now the truth is you got to treat it with a full-time effort but if even if you start part-time you get 10 or 15 leads a week you get comfortable with that sales process what's cool is you can double your lead flow and boom now you're in a situation where hey I can do 15 or 20 appointments I'm doing the same thing you don't have to change anything you just have to increase your investment in your lead generation of course there's things you can do from a strategic standpoint learn how to set better appointments learn how to door knock more effectively um, convert more through better sales techniques these are all things I teach and definitely recommend you to take up and learn but ultimately uh, like I said it comes down to the leads and you can scale up to that big of a uh, of a of a lead generation in order to uh, realize better income lots of guys do it they do it successfully and it's a pretty cool thing 
So let's go ahead and conclude. If you guys got any questions, by the way, feel free to drop one in the comment box. I'll be happy to answer anything. Let's go through these top 10 reasons to sell final expense again. First reason, it's a simple sales process. Um, rinse and repeat. You get out there and do it. If you like simple, final expense is for you. If you're a long-term sales funnel type of guy, like you sell big time products that take forever to sell, final expense is not for you. This is get it done, a one call close type of deal. Number two, it's an extreme numbers game. Um, very biased towards just numbers. You, the more you do, the more you make is generally how it goes. And if you like that kind of stuff, this is for you. Number three, you got trends of dem demographics on your side. Lots of people are turning older and entering that life phase where final expense becomes a reality and a must have because economically their family can't afford their burial, neither can they. So it's gonna be here for a long time in some form or capacity, unlike a lot of other niches like health insurance, which have been dramatically affected by government intrusion. Number four, uh, this is not a technical scale. Again, it's, it's really, if you like to sell and you want a simple product with a big market, it's perfect for you. You don't have to spend all sorts of time learning compliance rules, uh, navigating uh, net worth issues or assets and all that stuff like you would with financial type of products like annuities and IULs and that kind of thing. That's fast, high pay. Um, you know, final expense is a high first year commission product. It's not very good on the renewal side, but if you're looking for a product to go run with and get a decent pay on, final expense is perfect. Number six, it's broker oriented. Again, if you wanna be in this business, carry multiple companies. Don't work with a captive company that only has you work with one carrier. It's usually not a good deal for you in the long run as far as business quality and as far as uh, sales ratios go. The more options you have, the more sales you make, the more money you're going to make. And the better quality business you're going to have too. Uh, number seven, cool thing about final expense is jeans and a shirt is all you need. Boots too. Yeah. Wear your shoes, but you can even wear tennis shoes. People don't care. You're not a suit. You're not in a tie. Nothing elaborate like that, just basic um, basic sales, basic attire, it's cool. Number eight is gonna be, um, you're not stuck and chained to a desk. If you hate the idea of being stuck in a cubicle, you'll love final expense because it's anything but a cubicle. Uh, you see some pretty wild stuff, even nasty, but it makes for interesting stories and people won't believe the crap that you see. And uh, you always will have uh, the, uh, <laughs> the best stories to tell amongst your friends and family. Number nine, uh, the great thing about final expense relative to other lines of insurance, it's free. Uh, it's free, I'm sorry. Uh, it's instant approval for final expense. And um, you know, so if you work with the right carriers, they'll give you a decision uh, of yes or no on the spot. Uh, so you know before you go, your deal's done. And number 10, this business is scalable. Once you get comfortable, even on a part-time basis with a few leads, scale it. You're gonna be doing the same thing, just more of it and you can scale it to whatever, whatever level you're comfortable with. That's what's pretty cool about final expense. So with that said, I'll take this last uh, point here. Linnell said, should you wear a name tag to make your people comfortable? It's up to you. You know, I, I think anything, and it doesn't hurt to wear a name tag. I think if anything, it helps. Um, I don't do it anymore. Uh, I've been, I used to do it for the first year or two, and then I'm just comfortable door knocking. I think I've got, um, how do you say, a... I don't know, an aura about me. I'm pretty disarming. Uh, but, but when you do thousands of presentations and thousands of door knocks, you don't need all the crutches. And I say that in a constructive manner to help you get in the door, help you to sell. I train my agents to have a, a, a tag, an ID. I train them to show their licenses, family pictures, and the sales process. All that stuff has to help. It cannot hurt. And you should utilize it, especially as a new guy. Over time, you know, I just got, I worked out of it. I just stopped doing it. Probably lost the tag or I think the tag broke and I just never got a new one and noticed it really didn't make a difference. It's like how I went from khakis to jeans. I tried it after three years. I thought, hell, I can't wear jeans. It's crazy. You know, I'm a businessman. I can't wear jeans. And I started wearing them and nobody cared. You know, so I got comfortable doing it. Andrea, hey, how you doing today? Uh, question here. Dave, you have a great video that talks about what you carry in your car. Another one that talks about how to organize your business. Would you mind linking these or giving us a title if possible? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, let me pull it up. I'll put it in the chat box, Andrea. And um, if, you, if you don't get it for some reason, just email me and I'll send it to you. And uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I did a live stream that was pretty good. 
I had some pictures and stuff. So I'll dig around for it and see if I can find it. Um, and I'll put it in the comment box or just go ahead and email it to you if you don't find the link. I'll do it right after I wrap this thing up here. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't checked us out already, uh, if you're interested in final expense and want to see what we do in the mentorship program, check out my website. It's feagentmentor.com. i uh, got lots of free training over there. Uh, if you're an experienced agent looking for leads, I do what's called avatar telemarketing leads. I do Facebook final expense leads. Those are pretty cool, work pretty well. And uh, we also have sales training programs as well. Lots of stuff. Check it out. And if, I have, if you have any questions or anything, go to my website, click on the contact box. It's the best way to reach me. Just fill out the submission form. Either myself or my assistant, Jamie, will get, you, get with you and uh, see what we can do to help you. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening. I appreciate your attendance and um, checking out what we have to do. Y'all have a great weekend or week. I wish it was a weekend. It's only Monday. And we'll see you next time, uh, next week on Monday, okay? Thank you.